Well, good morning. Uh, today we're making a dollar switch. Now, if you've not already seen the section on stripping wires and soldering hints, please review those first. Um, these are these dollar switches. And you can put any little label on top of them, hopefully one that does not violate any copyright laws like this one does probably. But what it does, it turns a regular toy into a gross motor toy. Here's one I already, already have made up. There's no label on it though, but it just makes it, makes it so easy to switch and activate a toy. It does the same thing as the very expensive um, bubble switches, or these little button switches you can get, but they're around $50 a piece. I call these dollar switches because, well, yes, they are $1 a piece. Now what you need, you need to start with a jumper system that has this 1 8 inch mono, it's called. I'll, I'll put some background here so maybe you can see this a little bit better. But they're mono because there's only two plugs. This is a cord with the same plug on each end, and there's only two pieces of metal that, section, that separate them from the positive and negative of the two switches. If you unfortunately get a one that's a stereo, you get something that looks like this. This is the stereo. It has three different sections on it. There's the stereo on my right and or the mono on my right and the stereo on the left here too. So once you get that cord, go ahead and cut it in two. And what's that going to do? That's going to leave you with an end that you're going to strip off. It's going to be, I'll just restrip this one to show you how easy it can be. You know, have an end just like this. Um, then use your wire stripper carefully, since it doesn't quite fit the size here. You're going to have these wires and you're going to separate them. You have all these loose copper wires. Separate those loose copper wires the best you possibly can. Now, even one little extra strand of that copper, if it touches the other side, that's enough to short it out. So we want to make sure you get every little piece of copper, exposed copper, and then twist them up and form a wire out of that. Now the other section here has the white insulation. You want to take about half of that off. So that leaves you with that configuration. If you can see that a little bit better there too. So hard to see in this light here. So once you got that, I'm going to use my helping hand system here. And I'm going to pre-solder these wires first. with a nice clean soldering iron. Put the soldering iron underneath the course, touch a little bit of solder to it, and mold it quickly on that. So that kind of primes the, um, the wires first. And then the switch that we're going to use, here's the switch, here's the finished one from the back. The switch that we're going to use are these very cheap, what are called printed circuit board switches. They're around five cents a piece. And again, if I pre-solder these, I can just put a little piece of solder on each of the two connectors. And since I have solder already on the switches, let me clean this up a little better on this one side right here. Since I have solder on the connectors on the switch, and I have solder on the two wires, all I really need to do is just have a kind of steady hand touch it together and leave it there long enough for it to melt the solder and it'll just reattach onto the connector again. Okay. Once that is done, you really have all the soldering completed. In fact, I'll go ahead and plug this into this adapted toy here. This is how I check these things. And so if you just push that, you know it's going to be functional how to make that switch. But of course, that's not a very convenient switch. So what I do, I have these things. I got these little 3x5 pieces of plexiglass just built for me, cut for me at the local hardware um, shop. And I've drilled two small holes here. I don't know if you can see that. There's two small holes which I'll use for a strain release later on. And I also took a little 
sharp knife, an exacto knife basically, and scratched up the plastic. Now you have to scratch the plastic up because I'm going to hot glue the switch right to it. And I'm going to make sure that the black insulation is between, by at least an eighth of an inch, between the two holes that I've drilled at the top. A lot of times I'll go ahead and put just a little bit of glue first, push it down, hold it till the glue cools, Now, right now, we have a functional switch. I'll show you that because we can just put it in here, this motor switch, and it works. However, because we have not installed what's called a strain release, it'll soon pop that switch right off the board quickly there, and that's not going to last very long. We want this switch to last for an extremely long time. So, what I'm going to do here is use some a solid core wire which is very easy to strip it's called solid core because it is completely solid like one piece of one chunk of, of copper there and I'm going to just bend that and from the top down now I'm going to put it through those two small holes I have uh, drilled through the board there Okay, I'm going to pull that up nice and tight. I found out if you push down the board, it really gets all the slack out. And then I'm just going to twist that piece of copper up very tight, and that's going to secure the larger wire. In fact, it should be tight enough so when you move the wire, it does not wiggle inside where you made the solder connection at. I'm going to cut it down pretty close, but not going to cut off all what I just twisted. It up then and now I'm going to bend that little sharp edge down we don't want anything sharp here and then when I to finish this I'm just going to put a piece of more hot glue I should say and keep it down very low the hot glue has to be lower than your switch button otherwise it will push on the hot glue instead of the switch and cover up all of the soldering you did all that wire in the back there and just go around the whole thing and there when it cools down is your finished dollar switch now to finish this completely I'll go ahead and just use a glue stick and print up something on my printer I also put a piece of velcro on the bottom that way you can velcro it down and it will not slide around now I've had problems in the past with individuals with the little red switches, the big red switches, because they took they look too childish for adults. Although we had one client, we adapted her trackball using these switches for the left and right uh, mouse button, and we put pictures of her grandkids in there, and it was just perfect. So anyway, this is simply how to make a dollar switch.